welcome back to my channel so this video was based on a specific request and I'm not gonna lie uh, these topics can be very confusing on questions even though they're completely different so today I'm gonna give you clues on how to differentiate these and I'm gonna walk you through a question in order to reinforce that in your head so what I want you guys to do is to take tension pneumothorax and tamponade as one unit as these usually present as an emergency condition like in an acute setting and take constrictive pericarditis as another unit because it usually presents as a chronic condition. So I take C for chronic to, to make things easier. So why do I tell you take tamponade and tension pneumothorax as one unit? Because both of them cause obstructive shock. In case of tamponade, because there's a lot of fluid around the heart, the right heart cannot fill, causing obstructive shock. And also in case of tension pneumothorax, because there's a lot of air around the heart, again, it cannot fill, leading to obstructive shock which means that both of them will present in the same way in this manner. So, for instance, because there's a lot of fluid around the heart or there's a lot of air around it, um, the right heart cannot fill properly, and so blood is going to back up in the vena cava, increasing central venous pressure, leading to the manifestation of jugular venous distension. At the same time, because the right heart cannot fill, so blood cannot move forward to the left heart causing shock and hypotension due to decreased cardiac output. And so both tamponade and tension pneumothorax will present in the case with jugular venous distension and hypotension. Then how can you tell the difference? Things on lung examination and chest x-ray that the question stem will give you are those that will differentiate cardiac tamponade from tension pneumothorax. What I want you to do is to think about tamponade as a heart problem and so all the abnormalities on examination will be in the heart and think about pneumothorax as a lung problem. So tamponade is a heart problem. So on auscultation, there's going to be distant heart sounds, but nothing wrong in the lung. So the lungs are clear. You get the idea? Now why are the lungs clear? Because no blood is going through. There is impedance to blood flow through the right from the right heart to the left heart and so there is decreased blood flow in the, to the lungs so there's no crackles or anything like that that's lungs are clear so that's how i want you to think about it it's a heart problem then there is distant heart sounds but the lungs are okay are perfect right and on chest x-ray there is a water bottle heart. Again, the problem with chest x-ray is also in the heart because there's a lot of fluid around it. All right, guys? But in pneumothorax is a lung problem. And so all the abnormalities on lung examination or chest x-ray will be in the lungs and nothing wrong with the heart, right? So pneumothorax is a lung problem. On lung auscultation, there's going to be absent breath sounds. And on percussion, there's going to be hyper resonance because there's a lot of air around the lungs here. Absent breath sounds because no air is getting through the collapsed lung. That's how you should think about it. Collapsed lung, so absent breath sounds. Hyper resonance because there's a lot of air in the thoracic cavity. And because this is a lung problem, there is a lung problem on chest x-ray, which is a jet black lung field. So if you think about it this way, you're going to figure out the diagnosis right away um, based on lung examination and chest x-ray. So another key word that can clue you in the tamponade rather than tension pneumothorax is if the question mentioned pulsus paradoxus. Now, normally during inspiration, more blood gets into the right heart and that should not cause any problem because the pericardium is good and can accommodate that increase in blood and nothing happens. However, if the heart is surrounded by a lot of fluid, as in the case of tamponade, then the pericardium just cannot accommodate any extra blood. And so that's going to lead to bowing of the septum. There is bowing the interventricular septum which is going to make the left ventricular cavity 
so small. The fact that the left ventricular cavity is small means that there is less blood uh, pumped to the rest of the body and there's going to be a drop in cardiac output and in blood pressure. That is what we call pulsus paradoxus. That's when the blood pressure drops during the inspiration. As you can see here, this is inspiration. The blood pressure drops from 120 to 100. If the blood pressure drops more than 10 millimeters of mercury during inspiration, that's what we call pulsus paradoxus. This could be mentioned as a clue uh, in case of tamponade, but will not be found in tension pneumothorax, but it might not be mentioned, okay? So let's do a question together to reinforce that. All right, guys, so here is a U-world question that has both tension pneumothorax and cardiac tamponade in the same choice box. And that's what can be confusing. As I always tell you, read the last two sentences to clue you into the diagnosis. So the last two sentences say, his lungs are clear to auscultation with vesicular breath sounds heard bilaterally. The fact that the lungs are perfect with vesicular breath sounds heard bilaterally right away rules out tension pneumothorax. So now this is not in my cards right now. Now, he has jugular venous distension. I still don't know anything about the case. I'm reading the last two sentences. His jugular venous distension and his systolic blood pressure falls 50 millimeters of mercury with inspiration. Now, the examiner wouldn't tell you he has pulsus paradoxus, but he would, tell, he would want you to figure out that a drop in systolic blood pressure more than 10 millimeters of mercury with inspiration equals pulsus paradoxus. And so the only condition in all the answer choices that is associated with pulsus paradoxus is cardiac tamponade before I read the whole vignette. That's the secret about reading the last two sentences, guys. But I'm still going to give you the whole scenario. A 35-year-old previously healthy man is brought to the ER after being involved in a motor vehicle accident. All right, right now I don't know anything. He has significant blunt chest and head trauma. Shortly after he arrives, his blood pressure drops suddenly, which is shock, and he begins experiencing respiratory distress. I swear, guys, had I read this whole thing without reading the last two sentences, I would have been right now in this situation preparing myself to choose tension pneumothorax. Because it looks a lot like it, and that's what's confusing. So you need to figure out this first, all right? Now, another condition that people mix up with cardiac tamponade is constricted pericarditis. Now, that's not because they're very similar or anything like that. It's because constricted pericarditis also causes pulsus paradoxus. But constricted pericarditis, I want you to think about it as a chronic condition. Uh, in order for the pericardium to be fibrosed and thickened, this needs something Aggressive. And so there is always going to be a positive history of this person receiving irradiation, this person uh, having TB, especially if it's an immigrant, um, this person, for instance, uh, had the lymphoma before, things like that. There's always a positive history and it will present as a chronic heart failure like it will present in the form of right heart failure there's going to be dyspnea um there's going to be edema and these stuff it's much unlike um cardiac tamponade in its presentation even if the question uh the vignette mentions pulses paradoxus